Stone. Rush, welcome. Thank you very much. I cannot believe what I just heard. Is any of that true? Every word of it was true. It's one of the first times it's ever happened to me on television. So Thank are you, are you Thank saying you. most of the shows you appear on just lie through their teeth about no, who you are I'm, and what you No, stand no, no. I'm, I, I'm, I guess I am saying <laughs> Yeah, he is. I guess I guess I am. I guess I am saying I'm either not lied about. Let's say I'm mischaracterized or or misrepresented. But every word you said is accurate. And his mother did not write that phone. No, she no. Did I'm not. seeing, looking at it right there. She had nothing. To, but I'm I'm sure she appreciates it. Before we get going uh, off into the political world, I have to say you are about half the man I saw the last time I saw you in person. Size wise. Size wise. Size -wise. Yes, exactly. Yeah. How much weight have you lost? Well, since I last saw you, probably. I'd guess 105, maybe 110 pounds. I did it wow. in two stages. And I, I, I've done every diet there is, except one, uh, Weight Watchers. And it's only because I don't measure and I didn't cook. And nothing against Weight Watchers, please. But I, and all I've done is taken the elements of the diets that I did that I liked best and that worked best and combined them into my own. And it's basically a low-fat diet. Um, and at the heart of it, in the very beginning of it, when it's important to change the metabolism of it, no sugar and no booze. Ouch. And That's a tough diet. Well, it, it, uh, this was the easiest diet I've ever done. Uh, I'm still doing it for the most part uh, because I finally committed to a lifestyle change. And I've now had this weight off, I, I'll bet you, float for close to two years. Now, I have never maintained a weight loss this long before. And something that's happened, and I don't know why, I wish it would have happened 30 years ago, I really don't have an appetite. Food has become a, an interruption. Food is, is now... I, it, oh, it's, boy, the it, rest of us would love to live that way. I know. It's it not gets, an interruption. It's what we live for. It gets in the way most often. What motivated this weight loss? Were you, were you attempting an image redo? Was it a makeover time? What no, was it was health. My blood sugar had gotten up to diabetic levels. Yeah. And uh, I had noticed that I was traveling out in Las Vegas, uh, or Reno, actually, on my Rush to Excellence tour when I was first getting the radio program up and running. And I was 47 weekends a year. I was out doing a uh, basically a two-hour stand-up show uh, just to promote the program and let people know who I was. And, and uh, all the travel, and I was enjoying myself. And I made an, what I was telling myself was, I'm not going to deny myself anything. I need to be happy to succeed. I need to be in a good mood every day. So I, I just didn't deny myself anything. Uh, food, beverage, whatever it was, in terms of food. Right. Um, uh, and my blood sugar levels got high, and I got some signs that I was diabetic, and that that was the first signal that, that I had to do something about it. That's a pretty serious wake-up call. It, and and uh, fortunately, when I when I lost the weight and kept it off, the, the blood sugar normalized, and, and so I, I don't have to take anything for uh, diabetes or anything. I may end up being one later in life as I get older. It's in my family, but as of now, it's gone. It's totally manageable with my weight control. Are you thinking any differently these days? Uh, Are you still a conservative? Oh, that's in my heart. You know, that, I mean, I've, I've, uh, that, that's not something I chose. That's, that's something that I am, and I, no, I haven't changed a bit. Let's talk about some of the news of the day. Dan right. Quayle announcing that he's not going to run for the presidency. He is dropping out. He said he simply could not get the funding together and right. keep pace with George W. Bush. That came as no surprise. Who benefits from that? Well, obviously George W. Bush benefits, but I don't, I don't know that there's that much to benefit from. Uh, if you look at the poll numbers, Quayle didn't have all that much for anybody to pick up that, was, that is going to be meaningful for them. It's... Um, it's a shame. I, I know, Dan, and, and you talk about image and, and things. That man has been so trashed by comics and, and late night comedians and so forth. He's, uh, I just, I played golf with him about three weeks ago in West Virginia. Did he give uh, you any indication then that no, he was going to bail no. out? We didn't talk politics. That's, no, we were just out there. He's, and he's, you know, if he uh, wanted to, he could, he could play at a professional level. Sure, he's very He's good. complaining. His handicap's a four or five. He's complaining about it now. Uh, but no, we didn't. We didn't talk politics at all. Uh, uh, but he's. Uh, I, I don't think he's finished. I think he's going to keep going for it. I know that he's extremely confident in himself. He knows, thinks, is convinced that he's qualified, based on his makeup and his experience. And I think he'll keep shooting for it. He's a very proud man. He's a very intelligent man. And. Uh, uh, given what's going on in American politics today, you wouldn't. You won't find anybody. Uh, with a finer character or more decency about them than Dan Quayle. 
And at about the same time, John McCain officially announced that he would be running for the president today. Yeah. <laughs> We've been talking about that for many well, months, but uh, surprise, surprise, it's for real now. Yeah. Uh, what, what is your assessment of his campaign right now? Well, I. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, McCain has been uh, all over the board, uh, saying certain things about Buchanan one day, certain things about George W. Bush the next. Uh, he's clearly going to run a campaign based on his military service. Uh, that makes sense, doesn't it? It does. It's, 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 it's certainly a thing he's got to hang his hat on. Uh, and anything can happen. I, I don't have any idea who's going to get the nomination. You'd have to look at the money that George W. Bush has and say that that's going to guarantee it. Money and politics go hand in hand. But I don't think that McCain is by any means out of it right now. There's still a lot of time for anything to happen that could uh, cause somebody to screw up. So like you, I'm just sitting around watching all this stuff. I've made no choices. I just observe uh, and, and learn as much as I can and try to figure it all out. I'm. I'm intrigued by how many Republicans there are uh, who want to be president. There's such a temptation, though, to ordain George W. Bush the nominee because of the vast amount of money he's raised. What could potentially derail his campaign? I mean, what kind of mistake could he make that would be that costly? Well, I know I, we're 14 months out. I don't. I don't. I couldn't possibly predict something like that. I, I don't uh, have any idea what he could do. But you know that it's happened. People have had. Uh, situations like he's in who have been front runners way ahead of things uh, uh, and and it just takes one thing uh, is it likely to happen it's doubtful uh, but what it could be is is uh, I, I would think if there's something in his background they'd have found it by now because Lord knows the media has been giving him an anal exam like nobody has since Clinton came along and I they, they're trying to make a big deal now to this National Guard stuff I mean the same thing that they said it was no big deal about Clinton. I, I, I don't think they're going to uh, find anything, and I don't think he's going to slip up because even if he does, Clinton has proved you can slip up and survive. He's likable. He's just a very likable guy. But George W. Bush is taking some heat now for suggesting to Pat Buchanan that he should stay in the party while mm -hmm. a couple of the other guys he's in, a gal he's running against, are suggesting yeah. that Buchanan should be out of the party. Did, did he make a mistake by saying that? Uh, maybe I don't know that that again is something we're gonna have to wait and see if it if it is a mistake it'll show up in the debates the, here's the thing about Buchanan right now primarily and it's a it's a mischaracterization they're saying Buchanan is an anti-semite and that he is an admirer of Adolf Hitler so in the midst of all this here's George W Bush who says I think Pat should stay in the party why do you think that well I need every vote I can get well when it comes time for the debates Paula somebody in the media or some candidate is going to say, uh, Mr. Bush, do you really want the votes of admirers of Hitler and anti-Semites? Is that how important this presidency is to you? It's a pretty but, obvious tack to take. Uh, but I don't, th I don't think it's so unreasonable a question. There's no question it'll be asked. They'll try to embarrass him with it. But uh, he'll be able to get around that and out of that without any problem. I don't think that what anybody does with Buchanan at this point in time is going to be harmed by it. When we There's come back. too much time between now and the election for what happens now to be long-lasting enough oh, I, I to deny anybody the election. Can we talk more about Pat Buchanan after sure, the short break? Anytime. Okay, Rush, please stick around. We've got a lot more ahead tonight as well as the rest of the week right here on The Edge. Tune in this Wednesday when I'll be joined by Speaker of the House Dennis Hastert. Also, Ike Turner will speak out about allegations made against him by his famous wife. All that coming up on Wednesday. And as always, we're interested in your reaction to what we've got on the air. You can call and leave us a voicemail or you can email us at right there, what you see on the screen, the edge at foxnews.com. We'd love to hear what you think. We'll be right back. And welcome back. My guest for the full hour tonight is radio talk show host Rush Limbaugh. Welcome back. Thank we were you talking very about much. Pat Buchanan before Pat we Buchanan. took the break. Is he an opportunist? You've got people like uh, Bill Crystal out there saying that uh, he's Pat the Bunny hopping around the fringes of American politics and sniffing out whatever carrots our political system offers up. There are people running for the tall grass from Pat Buchanan right now because, especially in Washington, because they don't dare be identified with this anti-Semitism and admiration of Hitler that has been tagged with him. Pat has, in my estimation, gone off the reservation 
the conservative reservation. But nothing to do with that, nothing to do with this, this Hitler and anti-Semitism. I, I read his book about this, and he raises a valid question. Should Hitler have been stopped? Wouldn't it have been bet better for people uh, who ended up living under the Soviet Empire if we'd have let Hitler go and cream Stalin? Might the people who have... Uh, not been killed by Stalin, 20 million have lived and enjoyed a better life. It's a legitimate question to ask. That has become, he's an admirer of Hitler and an anti-Semite, which I don't think is, is true in, in his case, but there are a lot of people who do it. They don't want to be caught anywhere near it. Uh, he's got his own problems. Uh, he's become identified as a, as a certain type of conservative that isn't conservative anymore. Uh, my problem with Pat Buchanan is that he wants to expand the role of government in people's lives. And that isn't conservatism. And I know you've got a break coming up. If you want to talk more about that, we can. I come back uh, and I'll do so. Because I think it's important. I think people need to understand that's the primary problem most of us uh, have with Pat. And the concerns that the Reform Party members have if, in fact, he runs on the Reform ticket. Well, they do have some, but that's going to be there. fun to watch. I will, I will enjoy watching the Reform Party sort of just go nuts. <laughs> We'll be right back after this break. This Wednesday, we'll be taking a look at the issue of stalking. Is it on the rise? That and more. On and he's back. Rush Limbaugh, we were talking about Pat Buchanan before we went yeah. to the break. You were saying you didn't think he was conservative enough. Of the current crop of Republican candidates running for the presidency, who is conservative enough? Um, Steve Forbes is perhaps uh, among the current crop. When you, if you go strictly down the list of pure conservative definitions, Steve Forbes is probably going to get as close to it as anybody else. And there are a lot of people who are close too. Uh, On economic issues? Yeah, the, 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 the uh, yeah, primarily economic issues. The, now, that's where Buchanan's off the reservation, Paula. Uh, Buchanan, in his 92 campaign, when he was trying to get the nomination then, met some out-of-work guys up in New Hampshire, changed him forever. And uh, you got to understand, the foundation of conservatism is get rid of the government from your back pocket, get rid of its intrusiveness in our lives, get rid of the bureaucracy, get rid of as many federal departments that are unnecessary, lower the tax rate, just really try to de-emphasize the government as much as possible. Now, Pat has come along, and he wants the government to get involved in protecting people's jobs, in, in telling business how it can and can't run, who it can and can't hire. And he's got a group of people who agree with him about this. And these are people who think they are conservatives. So would you rather have him out of the Republican Party, too? Uh, no, I, I'm, see, there's another thing going on here, too. So there's an argument going on about whether Pat should go or whether Pat should stay. I'm just, let Pat do what he wants to do. I think it's wrong to beg him to stay, and I think it's wrong to push him out. Uh, he's manipulating this in such a way he's getting all sorts of attention. And he's got a book out there that he's selling, which I'm sure he doesn't mind at all. Uh, but I, I don't, I think there's a, a way too much time being wasted. Pat's not going to win. And Pat knows he's not going to win. Now, a lot of people would say, oh, Rush, so are you saying he should give up? No, he shouldn't give up, but let's be realistic. He isn't going to win, and he knows he's not going to win, so there's another motivation here. I don't doubt that he sincerely believes the things that he says about America, his view of where it should be, what it, what, where it should go, and this sort of thing. But my view, personally, is that this country, where we are culturally and socially right now, politically too, cannot afford Democrats, liberals, let's put it this way, liberals in the White House for four more years, and we can't afford the liberals regaining the House of Representatives. What is the we problem you have with liberals? Well, they're wrong. They like are so dangerous. Liberals, I believe, have destroyed or are in the process of destroying the culture of this country. They have, they, if you look at what the, the will, uh, well, uh, liberal prescriptions for welfare, they have only expanded the number of people that are on welfare rolls. Uh, liberalism destroys individual lives. Liberalism creates dependency on purpose. Liberalism operates in the guise of wanting to help people, but it actually condemns them to dependency. I want to go back it's, to the issue. It, it, is, it is the opposite of compassion. They're, I mean, and they own this compassion. They, they think they've got a, a monopoly on it, and there's nothing compassionate about liberalism. It hurts people. It harms them. Why and they do, don't even know it. Why do people have the view then? And you, you correct me if you think I'm, this, this is wrong. Right. That 
that Republicans will balance the budget first, then help people. The Democrats are compassionate about people, and they may waste a lot of money in the process of helping them, but they care about people first. Well, I don't believe they care about people first. That's, you, that, that's, the, people that's the big joke. Paula, we spent for, since 19, whenever the Great Society started, LBJ 64, 1964 to the present, we've spent $5 trillion. And the percentage of people in this country on welfare are still there. W welfare reform, by the way, which Clinton finally signed after yeah, he vetoing. He signed after, well, he signed the with Republic, a lot of support if it for the Republicans. If, well, if, that's the point. Welfare reform is putting people back to work. It's making them less dependent. And all the horror stories the liberals told us about what would happen are not happening. They're not increased crime in the streets. There is not a bunch of people walking homeless in the streets. They're out working. They had to. Well, if we had a Democrat sitting here right now, they'd be creaming you and they'd be throwing no. statistic after statistic after you, saying, they, Rush, you they, were dead wrong. No, they couldn't. Well, throw me the statistics. I they're, they're not there. They don't exist. I mean, I just, the statistics are just the opposite. The, fa the fact of the matter is that compassion, this whole business of compassion, uh, defined as the government helping people. Uh, that's not compassion. You know what compassion is? Compassion is counting the number of people who no longer need government help. The number of people who have been properly educated to provide for themselves, to become self-reliant, to reach their full potential as individuals, to enjoy the freedom, God-given freedom that this country offers them. That is denied to them under liberalism because they end up being dependent on government. And, and liberalism, look at how it operates. It has to scare people. Every four years, they threaten that Social Security is going to be taken away. They threaten that Medicare is going to be taken away. They threaten that old folks are going to be kicked out of their houses. None of this is true. They said, wait a minute, they said that the Republicans wanted to starve kids by taking school lunch program money away. The school lunch program money was going to be expanded. There were no cuts in Medicare. All of that was a flat-out big bunch of Barbara Streisand. Well, Which on my say, show is BS. What do you say to Americans who are watching this fiasco in Washington right now, the, where the Republicans promised that they'd have a budget deal done by Friday? It's not going to happen. They said we're not going to dip in Social Security to keep the government running. Th and now, voila, we I'm, hear that I'm, yes, the, the it looks like Dennis Hastert says that we're not going to meet this deadline. We're going to try for an extension, and too we're going to have that's, to. That's just darn too bad. And the bad. CBO says we're going to have to dip in Social Security. Oh, funds. that's. You don't this, buy that. Well, now the president just said that we've going to have a, a, a much larger. A surplus this year than anybody ever knew, which is another myth, too. The surpluses haven't happened, and yet everybody's out there talking about them as they exist. This Republican tax cut, mythical, non existent, $792 billion over 10 years. I don't know what tax bracket you're in, but I can imagine it's not the 15% bracket. The only people under this new tax plan that would have benefited in three years are the people in the 15% bracket, and their rate would be cut by half a percentage point to 14 and a half in the first three years. The point is, what's wrong is what you just cited. Do the re Republicans the, get backed into a corner? Wait a minute, tax forget cuts. Republicans. I'm here talking about conservatism. The Republicans in Washington are not representing conservatism. Th 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 this budget is larger than what Bill Clinton wanted it to be. The Republicans are spending more money on occasion on some programs than even Clinton has requested. This is why there's so much anger in the Republican Party, Paula. It is why there's so much anger in the conservative movement. The people who elected the Republican Congress in 94 knew the Democrats been lying to them for 40 years. Now they know the Republicans or think the Republicans been lying to them for six, five or six, and they're distraught. The Republicans said, we're going to get rid of this interference of government. We're going to get the government out of your back pocket. We're going to make sure the government doesn't destroy your kids' education. They haven't done any of that. And now the budget is, is, is it's coming down to the same old situation where it's going to be bloated and, 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 and reckless again because they don't have the courage to do what they promised they'd do in 94. And as you know, there was a threat of a, a possible shutdown, government shutdown, oh, which they're now yeah. saying is less likely to happen. Oh, but we'll talk about never all that, that and wasn't more. That ever going to happen. That's, Will you, you stick get, around? Sure. Can we talk about sure. uh, President Reagan and some Democrats? I'd love what to talk to you about know Mr. Is, Gore folks, and Mr. I'm Bradley. I'm strapped into this chair like on an airplane. <laughs> I can't leave even if I want to, which I I'm going to have to really. force you to talk about some Democrats, though, coming Bring up in our next. Bring All right, you're on. Can't wait. We'll be right back. Please stay with us.
Get Tough program on guns may be coming to your community. The Fair and Balanced story on the Fox News Channel. Those worried about the upcoming flu season, there is a new weapon against that viral winter menace. It is a nasal spray. Will it replace the annual flu shot? I'm Steve Brown. That story coming up here on the Fox News Channel. Unauthorized topless photos of a famous movie star are hitting newsstands. Do celebrities have any right to privacy? We'll have the full story right here on Fox. Good evening, I'm Jane Skinner. President Clinton says the budget windfall is even bigger than predicted, and he's again urging Congress to bank that surplus. Clinton wrote out the new surplus figure today, $115 billion this year, the largest in U.S. history. He pointed to the hero of the Battle of New Orleans, Andrew Jackson, the last president with a debt-free government. A controversial art exhibit has First Lady Hillary Clinton facing off again with New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Mrs. Clinton, though she does not approve of the exhibit, does not think funding should be cut from the Brooklyn Museum. Giuliani is threatening to cut $7 million. The exhibit includes a portrait of the Virgin Mary splattered with elephant dung. The United Auto Workers have reached a sweet deal with Daimler Chrysler. New contracts covering 75,000 workers have been approved. The workers will get a 3% increase each year for four years, plus a $1,350 signing bonus. The Miss America organization is looking for a new CEO. Pageant officials fired Robert Beck, the current boss, after some controversial rules changes that he endorsed. Two weeks ago, you may remember, the pageant revealed plans to drop its ban on contestants who were once married or who have had an abortion. Our next update will come at the top of the hour. Up next, more of Paul Azan's interview with Rush Limbaugh. Stay tuned for more of The Edge next. And welcome back to The Edge. I'm back with Rush Limbaugh for the rest of the half hour. Thanks again for standing yeah, it's by. It's my pleasure. Having a lot of fun here. So you get to talk about, thank you, you get to talk about your most fun subject of all, Democrats and liberals. Now let me, ask, let me ask you this. Do you have any liberal friends? Yeah. You do? Oh, sure. I and do. do. You, can you name any liberals that you like for us this evening? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. They got the interrogation lights are on here. Do you name? Can you name any? Can you? That you're having like? trouble. You're thinking now. Um, you're counting. No, I don't know that you'd know any of them. Uh, I have some some friends who are professors of political science in California who are liberals. Um, you know, Paul, I'm lousy. You asked me my favorite ten movies. I, I couldn't name you five. I, these kinds of questions always freeze me because you're right. I am trying to think of. Of, of names here, well, but there, the point is, I do. None of it is personal with with me and and liberals, but it is w about me and liberalism and the people who espouse it. There are some liberals uh, that I really do have a tremendous lack of respect for. All right, let's talk of the current crop of Democratic presidential contenders. Vice President Al Gore. Mm -hmm. Polls now in New Hampshire, and I know mm -hmm. how crazy you are about polls, show that what, wait, Bill what, Bradley, what, what, I'm just what? teasing okay. you, because I know you think we're what? far too poll dependent. But this That's is sort of right. significant, because in New Hampshire, they're showing Bradley with a three-point lead, mm -hmm. and that's the margin of error, of course, in the poll. Yeah, but that's right. nothing that anybody would have expected. Yeah, six that's the ago. difference. That's so, None of this was supposed to have happened. So what do you make of either one of these candidates? Well, um, it, it depends on the context in which you look at them. Uh, if, if you look at them uh, from the context, let's say, of Clinton fatigue. What is, in your, in your judgment, before you go any further, what is Clinton fatigue? Everybody seems to have a different take on that. Uh, my definition of Clinton fatigue is simply tired of, everybody tired of seeing them. They're tired of them, tired of them dominating the news. They're tired of them being on television every night. They're tired of listening to what they have to say about things. I mean, <laughs> you know, did you hear, I guess as uh, uh, last week, Hillary said that we have decided not to accept the offer. This is, a, this is a good definition of liberalism for you. Hillary says we've decided not to accept the offer from Terry McAuliffe. What an offer. They were begging people for that loan. They begged, uh, what was his name, uh, Erskine Secretary Bowles. Rubin. Yeah, they all said no. Bowles. They begged and begged and begged. And the only guy that said yes was McAuliffe. And now all of a sudden, because it hit the fan, they're out there saying, well, we're, we're Did you think it constituted a gift if they would have accepted that of course, guarantee? Of course. All right, Common so now sense. they're trying Common to do sense. a more traditional mortgage. Even they as are, we speak. Th these people are live and are governed by polls and focus groups, and it looks bad. They're building a legacy. That's all that matters. Hillary will not run for the Senate, by the way. That's another 
You, I, we'll I think, come back to that, but let's right. go back to, to the Gore-Bradley race. All right. I, I, I think that um, Bradley would probably be more formidable, tougher to beat. To whom? George W. Bush Any or of whoever, them. Any whoever of gets the nomination of them. of the yes, Republican because side. Of, because of Clinton fatigue. Um, I, and I don't mean this personally to the vice president. I'm, I'm speaking now within a pure political context. Um, and by the way, the vice president once called me a, uh, what was he, it was when, during the Perot debate on, on NAFTA, he called me a distinguished American, Paula, because I agreed with him on NAFTA. <laughs> Probably the only issue we've ever agreed well, with. Well, maybe a couple of others, but, but I agreed with him. So I was, I was cited as a distinguished American. I have never thought that Al Gore was unbeatable. All the Republicans who during impeachment said, oh, no, no, we can't get rid of Clinton because that would give Gore the White House and then he'd be an incumbent. I think he's very beatable. I really do. Bradley comes along and offers the opposite of Clinton fatigue. Now, Gore is not Clinton, but he's associated with it. You talk about polls, 53% of the American people don't want any more of Clintonism. Now, stop and think about that. In the Democratic Party cloakrooms, they've got to be panicked. They've got the best and strongest economy in the history of the world, and they think they created it. They're wrong, Reagan did, but they think they created it. And so the theory is that all you need is a good economy and you're in. The American people do not want 53%. Zogby, do not want a continuation of Clinton-Gore policies. That's just got to have thrown them for a loop. So here comes Bradley, uh, and Bradley is serious. He's dull. He's an adult. He's what people think of when, uh, when it comes time to vote. He's, he, he looks uh, clearly different from anything to do with Clinton and any part of that administration. And he's going to be forced to take some positions in the months to come. I mean, that's the, the criticism of him right now, that Al Gore has staked out some very specific positions, and Bill Bradley, to this point, has not See, taken I think to all that is just so much irrelevancy right now because their positions aren't going to really be that much different from one another. Uh, the, the trick they're going to play is to see which one can make themselves look like the biggest centrist. Well, it probably seems pretty good direction to move in for that party. Let's talk about that. But it's going to be a that lie. Makes sense. It's going to be disingenuous. Neither, neither of them are centrist. They're both way, way out there on a liberal I horizon. I want to ask you about that with Republican candidates, too. Fine. If that makes sense to move to this. Your side. problem There's here tonight is commercials. I know. Someone's got to pay for this. <laughs> I know. We want your feedback. You can call us and leave a, or leave a voicemail or email us. Let us know what you think about tonight's show. And Rush, can you handle it if they say something about you, Rush? We'll read only the best emails. You can you. read anything. My right. skin is coarsened by now, Paula. <laughs> okay. You can handle it. We'll be right back. Factor this, another major Clinton supporter dumps Vice President Gore in favor of Bill Bradley. We'll find out why and the John Benet Ramsey case heats up with a murder accusation against a young Colorado man on the next O'Reilly Factor. And welcome back. My guest for the full hour tonight is radio talk show host Rush Limbaugh. Believe it or not, I had the opportunity to listen to you on radio today. Thank you. You were ranting and raving about this new Reagan biography that's going to hit bookshelves probably sometime I was Thursday. discussing it. You were discussing, discussing it. it. Ranting you, and raving. Well, you, see. you had some pretty strong things to say well, about yeah, but critics. Ranting and raving creates this image of un, out of control, you going were loud. Nuts. You were loud. I was reasoned. <laughs> I was correct. I was simply passionate. I, I have seen you more contained. But let me tell you, for the folks that are, haven't had a chance to, to listen to the big uproar about this book, what the biography is saying about yeah. Ronald Reagan. He, is, he had this to say. He was truly one of the strangest men who has ever lived. Nobody around him understood him. Every person I interviewed, almost without exception, would say, you know, I could never really figure him out. Was he that enigmatic? Well, I never met him, Paula. I must, I must be honest about that. I always wanted to, but I never got a chance to. But I have a theory about all this. And by the way, there were four men on Meet the Press who denied that. They knew him well, and they were able to get a handle on him. But the, here's the, the problem. Uh, we live in a, an era with generations now who are far different than it was when Reagan was alive. Reagan did not emote. Ronald Reagan didn't tell people how he felt. 
You know, in America today, we, we bleed on each other. The first thing we say to each other is how we're feeling, and we, we, we make each other victims. We make ourselves victims. We talk about all the stress we're in. We have so much prosperity and so much time on our hands that we have so much time that we can complain and moan to ourselves about how tough life is. And Reagan simply didn't think about himself. He was not introspective. And so this biographer couldn't get Reagan to tell him what Reagan thought about himself. So it was a big mystery to him. It's not. It's just he came from a generation of people who were not self-absorbed. We are self-absorbed today in America. It's not good either. It's a, it's a, I think it's a very a damnable cultural thing that's happened, that it's being fueled. Uh, by awareness and consciousness and sensitivity and all this other stuff. That's why he couldn't get to Reagan. It's no more complicated than that. He also made some explosive comments about the relationship between the Bushes and the Reagans. He said, I think Nancy regarded Barbara as the help and Bush as, as the help. Downstairs people, not upstairs people. And the Bushes sensed that. I think they bitterly resented the fact that they were rarely invited upstairs. Now, I had an opportunity to talk with President Bush a couple weeks ago before this uproar. I know that. Roar. Hey, congratulations. Oh, thank me. you. All started. And here's what he had to say about the reality of that relationship. Relationship. Ronald Reagan was a great influence in my life. I didn't know him well when I was uh, when I, he chose me to be vice president. We ran against each other, never with any great personal animosity at all. But he selected me, and uh, from then on, uh, we became personal friends. Now, we can't say that flies in the face of what this biographer is saying because we yeah. actually talked to him before right. this, this uh, erupted. But we've also heard a number of sure. people over the last 24 hours say, wait a minute, there's always friction between the vice president's staff right. and the president's staff. That's the way it is, folks. What do you make of well, this? I, you know, I, there's, a, there's a quote going around, and I haven't read the book. The, the quote's going around that, that Reagan, uh, that Bush said that he and Barbara felt unappreciated. I hope that's not true. Because if it weren't for Ronald Reagan naming Bush vice president, he would have never been president. He showed him a great, and Bush is the one who called the economics that gave us our prosperity today, voodoo economics, still named him vice president. I hope that that's not correct. I hope President Bush didn't say that. All right, got to take another break. We'll be right back. I continue my conversation now with radio talk show host Rush Limbaugh. Thanks for standing by. You bet. So how mad do people get at you these days? Oh, not nearly as mad as they used to. Now why is that? Actually, I think, to, to be honest with you, I think, I think there's, I'm going through a phase, people are getting madder at me now than they ever have. What, you haven't case. mellowed? Well, no, it has nothing to do with mellowing. I haven't changed and they have. The Perot people got very mad at me in 92 when I did not become one of them. And now the Buchanan Brigadiers, uh, are mad at me that I'm not one of them. Well, they you're saying he, yeah, you're saying he's not conservative enough. Are there a lot of people no, that I'm don't not think he's you not conservative are not enough? Don't do this conservative enough business. I'm not even lit litmus test here. I'm saying he's he has abandoned a particular foundational conservative principle, Paula. Okay, that's all I'm saying. And I I do not consider myself to have abandoned any conservative principle. Are there still people who beat you up for not being conservative enough? Oh yeah. Oh. What do they say? Well, by all means. Uh, they say that I've forfeited my patriotism, that I, that I uh, have gotten uh, too lazy, fat, dumb, and happy. I, I'm not hungry anymore. Skinny, I don't, dumb, and happy. Skinny, dumb, and happy. <laughs> uh, uh, Probably they, hate you for that, are, too. They get mad at me for talking about sports. They get mad, I get, you know, people get mad at me all the time, Paula. I mean, it's, 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 I'm a, called a polarizing figure. Are you humored by it? Because I know I, I saved some of the best ones. I mean, the, my favorite one that I've ever gotten is someone that says, Paul is on, you are so stupid, you make my teeth hurt. The Chinese are spying on us. <laughs> Duh. That's, that has, you know, it's my prized possession yeah. in my office. Uh, are you, are, I, does I, it affect you anymore? Do you even care what people Oh, it about? used to. It doesn't anymore. It used to. I've grown a lot. I was naive. I didn't, I mean, I didn't have any idea what success really meant uh, when I started pursuing it. I had, I didn't have any idea what would actually happen to me. And it took a while to become accustomed to the fact that a part of the definition of success for me was making people mad. When I was growing up, nobody disliked me. I mean, there were people who disliked me, but, but uh, not half the population. I mean, not, it, I, I was not, nobody ever thought I hated anybody. Nobody ever, when I was growing up, thought I was a bigot or a racist or a sexist or homophobe or all those cliches that are attached to conservatives. And all of a sudden, I have to define my success now by how many people think that uh, in terms of liberals and so forth. I mean, they do listen. And 
But so, you haven't helped yourself by, you know, a long time ago calling the you know, Nazis and, I am and, proud and of that. environmental wackos. No, I'm proud of that. So, but then they just create that. No, it's it's true. You see, <laughs> but my what you know what I do on my radio program. A lot of people. I assume maybe watching this tonight who may have not listened to me in a while. My program is not all about politics. My program is about being the best you can be. It's about extraordinary people becoming, or ordinary people becoming extraordinary people. It's about the average American accomplishing great things and how they can do it. You know what the three best programs of mine rated by the audience are? Back during a period of corporate downsizing and layoffs during the early era of NAFTA, I decided to take calls from people, white collar people who got laid off in their 40s and 50s, who had overcome it and succeeded. They called and they told their stories. Three of the most inspiring programs had nothing to do with politics. Uh, my program focuses on being the best you can be, making opportunities for yourself, not depending on anybody else, realizing the freedoms, facing reality, all of these sorts of things. Politics is in the mix and it's a, it's a large part of it, but saying these kinds of things uh, ag angers a lot of people there because Paula there are people who and they unfortunately are liberal who do not want people to be self-reliant because the more self-reliant people there are the less power liberals have because the less need for liberals there is so uh, I have made a lot of people angry but m all my program is about is the truth and if I think a woman is a feminazi, as I've clearly have defined it, and if I think some environmentalist wackos are environmentalist wackos, I'm going to say so. Besides, Paula, you know there's a lot of noise out there. There are a lot of radio shows you can listen to, a lot of radio stations you can listen to. You've got to cut through the noise. I mean, a anybody can be conservative. Anybody can be liberal. But you have to be able to communicate your point of view in an entertaining and substantive way. I do something that I don't think is found in too many other places in the media. I combine serious discussion of issues with irreverent humor, with credibility on both sides. What is more important, the entertainment value or your personal agenda and these values you espouse on the air? They're both important. There's no difference in the two. I mean, uh, I, if I understand your question. Which one would you weight more heavily? Are there, e in are there terms equal balance? In terms of what? The importance in your show. Oh, I think they're, 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 you cannot take one out uh, and, and leave the other. They're both part of it. Um, I am as equally devoted to entertaining people uh, as I am to the things I believe. They are all what I am. I am me. I hide behind nothing. I am who I am every day on the radio. I, do, I don't make anything up. I don't, I don't lie about what I believe. I don't say things I don't believe just to get a reaction from people. We're a good rating. But I do do parody and satire. Uh, everything I do entertainment or serious has a political or cultural or social point to be made. It's guess, all part of the mix. Guess what? Someone has to pay for this break again. You know the reality. <laughs> commercial television. Rush, we, we got to take we, another break. We call them profit centers. At the yes, EIB that's right. Network. This is our last break. Uh, you will stay with us. Sure. One more segment. No, actually, with I'm Rush going to leave and leave He's you in go, the lurch He here. wants to go watch football. i not allowed to say that, am I? Everybody knows football. I don't we'll want right to watch back. football. Much rather be here. Thank you. We're back with our final moments with Rush Limbaugh. Before we let we go, let you go. Your success has come at the expense of liberals. What are you going to do if we end up with a Republican in the White House? Oh, and I wish we had controlling in the House and the Senate. I really wish we had more time for this because that's a popular misconception. Misconception. I, my success, most of it occurred during the Bush administration. See, it doesn't matter who's in the White House. My success is not determined by who wins elections. There will always be liberals, and as such, there will always be a need for me. But won't it be harder to pick on no, them if you no, have No, no, no. When they're out the of power, Paula, is when they're funnier. When they're, when they're in power, they're dangerous, like now, and you have to take them more seriously. When they're out of power and making noise and trying to get back in power, that's when they do stupid stuff like die-ins and great global peace marches for nuclear disarmament. And that's when they do all the animal rights wacko stuff that's funny. They don't do any of that. When they're in power, they try to enact all this craziness as law and so you got to stop them. Will you ever wind up in a political uh, mm -mm. appointee position? No. <laughs> I know you wouldn't run for office. No, no, probably. no, I don't. You'd I, never accept a I don't, political I appointment can't, of any no. kind. I can't, no. I don't know what it would be. Secretary of State? <laughs> um, can you imagine the confirmation hearings? They bring you up there. Yes, he did say the word feminazi to me on the night of September the 20th. He's out. <laughs> He's gone. Yeah. You make no. a pretty good uh, White House press person. 
No, 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 because I tell the truth. I would not make a good. I would not make. Yeah, a you good would not spoken. make a very no, good no, spinner. No, no. Uh -uh. Um, another health issue before yeah. we leave, because we're concerned. You know, we know you've lost a lot of weight. How about the smoking thing? Are you are you done with your smoking cigars? Are you nope. still? I still smoke cigars. Are you worried about the impact that's not, having on your health? No. 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 Mm -mm. Why not? Why should I be? The doctors because tell you you should now, be. Now, see, you've read all the latest propaganda that, that that's out there got cigars as there was about cigarettes. I don't. I don't inhale cigars. I know that. Um, it would probably be wiser not to, but so far I haven't had a cold since I started smoking cigars. There's something in tobacco that insulates me from the common cold virus. And that's true. I did not, it is true. My wife is infuriated listening to this now because she would prefer that I, that I quit. But I do enjoy it very much. And I am trying to reduce the amount that I smoke on a daily basis. And I'm succeeding moderately at that, yes. That's good. How long are you going to ride this train that you're on? As long as I am interested in it. I, mean, I, I think my success is determined totally by my passion. And if I get up one day and don't care what's in the newspaper, or if I don't care to watch a news program, then that would be bad news. So um, I find it amazing that three hours a day you fill up a program, you don't have guests. You're yeah. creating an empty, you know, a canvas every single day of your life. And that it's not overwhelming for you at all. You've been doing it for so long that that's I, a yeah, breeze? It, it is a breeze. It's a breeze. It's what I was born to do. Uh, I've, I've always thought, because of that, by the way, that, that radio people uh, are very much under-respected or, or under-appreciated because they don't have legions of producers going out finding guests and, and uh, doing all of that. Some of them do, but, but uh, they are producers, performers, and all of that rolled into one big bundle. You did not meet the obvious standards of success. You were fired how many times in the business? Seven. Seven I think, times. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Never finished college. No. Nope. Can your mother believe where you're, where you are today? Yes. <laughs> she can. <laughs> she knew it all along. She was the one. She was the one who made me uh, believe I was special. She was. She was um, uh, always convinced I was going to succeed. Well, it's been a pleasure. Love you, mom. Aww. She always was. And uh, Freedie, I assume she I has a Fox too. News channel, too. Oh, was there your wife down in Florida she's something. watching, too? Absolutely. Well, I'm uh, hoping so. <laughs> I love them both. And uh, they, they both mean so much to me. They really do. And I, my mother has the Fox News channel. I think the uh, city of Cape Girardeau cable system there brought it in just so. She can see me later on. You're happy to hear that. We want to know, one of the, one of the emails that's come in, uh, Ashley suggests that you should be our next president. See, there might be politics in your life yeah, after all, Rush yeah. Limbaugh. On the other side of the fence, thank you very, very much. Enjoy. Nice to have you. You can uh, get back to what you were doing before. No, I was not.